right, look behind you, look at these faces. I'm telling you right now, one of you won't make it to 20 years. Somebody in this room is gonna die. Good firefighters die, smart firefighters die, brave firefighters die. Firefighters die on this job. We are here to make sure that you are trained to the best of your ability to reduce your chances of getting hurt or killed on this job. Is that understood? Yes, sir! We good! One, two, whole job is about attitude. You have to have the right attitude. Guys, we're gonna break your chops. We're gonna break your chops over things that you think are stupid. I'm telling you, you ain't getting away with shit. This is more than a paycheck. This is a calling. This is a lifestyle. You better get that through your heads. There you go. What are you doing? Can't do this. I don't want it like that either. Like this. Okay. What are you checking for? Checking the cell, make sure it's there. Okay, good. I'm not here, what are you gonna do with this? Throw it out. You're not gonna throw it, I don't wanna get hit with it. Next step. Check what are you doing? Checking the floor, make sure it's solid. Good, you got a floor. Okay. Three guys with the ropes, I want you to take the stairs instead of the goose deck, all right? All right, who's next? You can let go now. All right, get in position. See ya. This job is a life and death job. Your life and your brother's life depend upon it. You have to be 100%, 100% of the time. No excuses. You're on the payroll. You ain't in the brotherhood. You ain't in the brotherhood till the brothers in the firehouse say you're in the brotherhood. And there's a big difference. You have to understand that. This is the New York City Fire Department. We do things our way. Start every day. Like the kitchen floor gets mopped three times a day, easy. That puts this door down. Are you done? I'm very young to be in a, in a sock company with four years on, but there's a couple guys, maybe three and a half. So we're all like junior men. We grouped each other together. My desire to be a fireman started when I was a little child, before everything else. That's all I ever wanted to do. Put something inside me said I wanted to be a fireman, but that was the only direction I had in life to be a fireman. So rewarding. You, you know, you don't see it in the paycheck, but you really feel it. Like, uh, I've basically been living here, you know, you see every other day I'm here with, uh, and uh, you don't mind, you actually wake up every day, not tired, you know, but you're like, oh, I can't wait to get to work, I can't wait to see what today brings. This is the glorious part of the job, cleaning the sink. Somebody's gotta do it. It's a matter of time to get the least desirable jobs. There's no sense complaining about anything because, you know, if you see something that has to be done, you complain. You can't complain about it, just do it. Do it yourself. You know, just cleaning the sinks up or mopping the floors or whatever is a lot of pride, and you do it because you love being here. Be a kitchen bitch right now. You know, if I take the time out to clean this up and do a good job of cleaning it, maybe that's a reflection upon everything else I do. You can't be passing it on to the next guy. You gotta do it. If you see something that needs to be done, you take care of it. The whole job is young. You know, the entire fire department is young. Um, some people think that I'm a young captain. Eleven of our guys came after September 11th, 2001, because we lost we lost six members that were killed, and um, we lost four guys to promotion. I lost three guys to retirement. So I have 11 guys that are new to the squad since uh, September 11th. We're just in a transitional stage. Never replace those guys that we lost uh, 
but uh, you know, we just through training and through diligence, uh, we'll get back up to that same level. It's tough for new guys because they're coming to something that they want to come to this company, but they just they're coming at, at not such a good time for a new guy to come. It wasn't because under, it wasn't under our circumstances. They're coming under a time come. where we we have a lot of problems. We're dealing with the loss of our guys. <clears throat> the last thing we want to do is train new guys at, the, at that point last year. And it has been difficult. And it has been, guys, it has you know, been, it has been a growing pains because like you said, not only are you dealing with raw emotions, you know, from the tragedy, but you're also dealing with human instincts. Like, you know, I want to still fit in. I want to be able to prove myself, but it's hard because you're not only doing it on a physical level, you, uh, you know, you're doing it on an emotional level too. Cause now I want Greg to like me as much as he liked his friends prior to here. There was people who were, who were, who were killed from top to bottom, and the bottom line is the perseverance from everybody is ca capable of, 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 of growing and getting back to where it was before September 11th. This is what we used to use, this is the chalkboard we used to use for our riding list. And that's the riding list from September 11th, those are the guys that their last, their last tour. Right now we just have the piece of plexiglass screwed in so nobody can erase it or mess with it. But we're going to try to figure out a way to permanently preserve it. Got everybody? One, two, three, four, five. Shatsy's driving. Fee's got the can. Hanky got the irons, and you're hooked up with Mike. You got the hook control. Terry, you got the roof. First thing we got to do, we got to drill at 10:30 in the Saratoga building. We're gonna do standpipe operations and then uh, rescue of a uh, missing fireman. Guys, listen up. Here's a scenario. We got a report of a fire. It's a fireproof building. 60, 70, and 80. That's the dispatcher's report. You're going to be the engine. You're going to be the truck. So you got it. Okay, you guys can go. Stand pipes in the other stairwell. I'm going up to seven. Go. Hit. 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 Hold up. Hit. Go. Hit! 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 Stop! Stop! You're going right. You're going left. Stay to the left wall. Okay? Don't let that door close behind you. Go! Go ahead, 18. You got it. Two, five, two to 18. We got the fire back here. Start the line, okay? Back out that way. Back out, give him room. The front door. Keep, co keep coming back. You got another 10 feet. You're going to go that way, and the front door is right there. Go. Go, go, go. go. We got all our tools. That was your basic forcible entry drill. You know, how to force a door, how to, how to perform a search, how to stretch a hose line, and how to get somebody out. Right from day one of probably school, you know, you're, you're putting a squad, and there's, there's the whole concept of teamwork. You have to have a team. You can't do it alone. You know, no one man is as good at, alone as we all are as a team. In the firehouse here, even at roll call, roll call, you all get together in the group, you decide what you're going to do for the day as a group, you clean the tools as a group, you're doing everything as a group. But like we said before, when you go out the door and now you go into a fire, now it's that life and death situation where that teamwork could mean the difference between life and death. The day you raise your hand and take that oath to do this job is the day the brotherhood begins. That's, that's the day it starts, because you, you got guys standing to your left and to your right, and those are the guys that are either, you're depending on them, or they're depending on you. For you and your life is in their hands, and their life is in your hands. Exactly. It helps to like them, you know, you, you don't, you, you're just here for a 24, or you're here for a tour, but uh, you, you, it's impossible to like everybody you work with. <laughs> but once the tones go off, you leave all that stuff behind in the firehouse, and you go out and you do your job bus chops for a reason, you know, uh, 
to teach you things, to teach you responsibility. And the fly has to, you know, that you're going to be responsible for somebody that you're with, you know. You have to do your job and see it through to the end. And that seems to be the way we all learn around here.